go. The twist. I've never been a good person. I mean, I was an assassin. But, you know, then I got the strangest mission. I was paid to live a normal life. Let's start from the beginning. My name is Mark Sloan. I kill people. Easily. I have no conscience. Or at least I didn't. I'm not sure now. I've always been manipulated by the money. I probably should have stopped at some point, but I never did. I was actually about to pull the trigger on a guy when I got the text. Whenever an opportunity that may have a ton of cash involved presents itself, my phone tells me. If it's less than what I'm getting paid, I ignore it. But when it's more than what I'm currently getting paid involved, I stop right then and there. I can always tell by the number of vibrations. Every vibration equals one digit. If the job has more digits than what I'm currently being paid, I drop the job and switch to a new one. I was getting paid a lot for this skills, so I didn't expect I would get anything higher. I was wrong. I gave a counting after the 19th vibration. My finger was on the trigger, so I just pulled it, killed the guy, made a quick escape, and went to collect my payment. Swift and painless. Well, for me, anyway. I took a look at my phone. It was an iPhone 4S, but man, did I hacked it. it. Made me completely anonymous until I was okay to let it imply I know who I was. The text gave me some incredible number large that I ever received, then below it told me my assignment. Stop. Don't kill. What? What kind of assignment was that? I retraced the text using my Hack to Find My iPhone app, covered half my face with a scar, slipped jacket on, and slid my revolver in my pocket. Then I made my way to the location and knocked on the door. Come in, a voice said. It's open. So I went in. The house certainly didn't look like the man had the money he claimed. I kept my hand on the gun in my coat pocket. If this was a waste of time, he would be sorry. Actually, forget that. He wouldn't have time to be sorry before he died. May I ask who you are? The voice belonged to an old man sitting in a rocking chair next to the fireplace. You contacted me, I said, holding my phone, uh, holding up my phone with text on it. What kind of a joke is this? My voice was muffled by the scarf. No joke, the old man said. I saved up a lot of money, and as you can see, I spent very little of my fortune. Now I'm dying, and there's no cure. I need for someone to inherit my fortune. I've been following your work. Very efficient, clean, quick. Right through the middle of the forehead, every time. I don't like killing. The world would be a much better place to it. You're a pacifist. Yes, and a very rich one at that. So here's my offer. You receive one million dollars every, for every year you don't kill, knock out, or otherwise harm people in an extreme manner. You receive another 500,000 each time you bring in another assassin. Also 200,000 when you throw them away every weapon you want. Every weapon you want. But if you hurt someone and it's even halfway lethal or and or not in, in or not in self-defense, all your money for that year disappears from your account. Wow, that's a lot of money, I thought. Give up being an assassin, yeah, okay, totally for this kind of job. How do I know you'll follow through? I asked. The first million is in your account right now. Take a look. I opened up the account on my phone. Sure enough, I just got a million bucks. Mister, you got a deal, I said. It wasn't that easy. Year after year, I watched it up. It's not easy to suppress that killer instinct. But slowly, I gained more and more control. Threw away more and more weapons. The easiest thing was to turn another assassins. There may be under among deans, but there ain't none among the killers. Eventually, I got started keeping the money. And then I met this chick, Sarah Hansen. Ooh, she was hot. Pants on her uniform were quite form-fitting. She was a cop, see, and she was always there when I brought in an assassin. I tried to get her attention once or twice. The only time I actually succeeded was when I was buying her nice big... Oh, well, I slipped. She came over, helped me up, and leaned in close. Embarrassingly, I thought she was going to kiss me. Instead, she went over to my ear and said, What's your step? Then walked away. I had never loved a cop uniform so much. After a while, well, let's just say the money stopped being my motivation. Or at least all of it. One day she came up to me and I nearly jumped for joy. That is right until she took me by the collar and brought me into the inter interrogation room. In the last five years, you brought us 15 of the most efficient assassins in the world. Who are you? How can you find these people? So I told her. You expect me to believe that? She said skeptically. Then an assassin for hire would do anything for money? Yeah, I guess so. She sighed. You're free to go. A couple years later, we got married. 
I'm not really sure what made her decide I was on the level. Now I'm old and gray and she's gone. I'll be with her soon, I suppose, if you believe in that sort of thing. I used to not, but I guess things have changed. <coughs> there was that one time, a few weeks ago, when I thought I heard the old man's voice, the man who set me on this path. You know what he said? He said, good on you, man. Good on you. Guess I'll be with him too now that I think about it. The first thing I'm going to ask him is, how on earth did you know I could do this? I fell asleep and I saw him. He said, because you were the greediest man I've ever met, a man who'd do anything for a boatload of cash in return. I knew that he would keep doing it.